Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over a really cool aggressive defense from Black against the Italian game that I see every now and then. The Italian game, pawn e4, pawn e5, and your opponent immediately playing a bishop here to c4. Now it's more common to first get your knights involved into the game, knight to f3, knight to c3. But bishop to c4 is pretty common, trying to control the center of the board with both the pawn and the bishop. And the Calabrese counter gambit is pawn to f5. Very, very aggressive move from black. So this is what we're going to be going over today. This is, in my opinion, probably going to be the most in-depth video that you'll ever find on the Calabrese counter gambit. So hopefully you'll learn a lot, you can try it out, and definitely get some wins under your belt against the Italian game. Now while there are tons and tons of variations, we're going to be looking at the main ones that you may see and some of the more common moves that people play if they are white. Now the first line that you may see is the bishop take here on g8. Now while it's not always the most common for white to give up his light square bishop in exchange for a knight early on, he may do it for two reasons. One is because after black takes here on g8, black can no longer castle on the king side. Usually when you play pawn here to f5, giving up material, signifying that hey, you're, you're giving up material, you're going to castle on the king side, somewhat of a king's gambit as black to control this long semi-open file with your rook. Black no longer has that kingside safety anymore since he can't castle. And also, white can immediately bring his queen down here to h5, check, and start to put a lot of pressure on black. Because this is the most common move after queen here to h5 attack, we're going to go over that line just so you can kind of see what that looks like. Black pretty much has to play pawn here to g6, stopping that that queen from attacking. The queen will now come down and capture here on h7. And then the rook's going to play rook to g7. Now, it, it kind of looks messed up from Black's point of view. It looks like he's just getting destroyed, dominated. But really, he's kind of taking this queen out of the game. And his king's pretty safe here on e8. Yes, he hasn't castled. Yes, he's probably not going to castle for a while since he still has to somehow develop the rest of his pieces on this queen side. But this queen's not really going to be doing a whole lot more harm. And white really hasn't developed any of his other pieces. Doesn't really have a strong presence in the center of the board besides this e-pawn right here. And so there's a few ways that white may continue. He could play queen here to h8. He could play queen here to h6. If he decides to play queen here to h8, then black can play queen here to g5. And this is a pretty devastating move as far as white's concerned because, again, white really hasn't played too many of his pieces. Yes, he has played his queen over here, but it's just moving along this h file. It's not doing a whole heck of a lot. Black, on the other hand, has a, a pretty aggressive setup, and this rook here and bishop actually hold a, a pretty strong fort and, and really keep white at bay. Now the queen here on g5 is attacking this pawn here on g2, so white really needs to defend that. He could play pawn here to g3, stopping it. He could play queen here to h3, two different options. If he plays pawn here to g3, then black's going to take with his pawn here on e4, completely blowing up the center of the board. Black now has a huge advantage in the center. It's really tough to see how white's going to continue. He doesn't have his light square bishop to Fianchetto here to g2. He can't play the natural move of knight here to f3, trying to control the center of the board. He could try something. He would really like to play pawn here to d3 with the discovered attack, but the queen could just take here on c1. That's going to be a pretty bad move. He could try the knight to c3 here, but then queen to f5 continues with the pressure. It's still going to be very, very difficult for white to really find any game because, again, black is just dominating even though he hasn't castled. Now, instead of the queen coming here, or instead of the pawn coming to a g3, again, the other move we talked about is the queen back here to h3. Black can play a little bit more patiently. He can play knight here to c6. Again, developing his pieces, trying to control the center of the board from here. If now we see knight to f3 attacking the queen, the queen can always come back here to e7. He's not in a huge rush to really attack right away. He feels pretty confident and safe if the pawn now takes here on f5, knowing that the queen is protecting it right here. Then we can play pawn pushing forward to e4, attacking this knight. The knight's forced to move. It doesn't really have any great squares. It could come to h4 if it wanted to. Again, everywhere else is, is pretty bad. And then we have a pawn here to d5. Again, black's now controlling the center of the board. 
Black has his other piece now, Bishop here on c8, attacking this material. Definitely going to be good for, for Black. White could try something pretty creative. He could play Knight takes here on g6 after our Rook takes. Now the Queen can come down to h5, pinning down the Rook and this Pawn attacking as well. But the Bishop can take here on f5. All of a sudden, Black has complete control of the center of the board. His rook is actually nicely defended. It's going to be very difficult for this queen alone to attack the king. The king's pretty safe. He can actually castle on the queen side now if he wanted to. Black is in complete control. White hasn't moved any of his pieces back here. All the pieces that he has moved all of a sudden are no longer on the board. And white's going to have to really have a, some sort of game plan to get back in this because black in this particular case is dominating. Now instead of the queen coming to h8, he doesn't have to play that. He could play queen here to h6, trying to maintain some of that pressure over here, also allowing him to come back if he ever does need to retreat. Black can just continue trying to control the center of the board with knight here to c6. And this can be pretty devastating because it allows him to play this knight to d4, which can be pretty devastating. You may see your opponent play knight to c3, trying to develop some of his pieces on the board. This is going to be completely fine because now knight to d4 is that dagger. Attacking the square here on c2, forking the king and the rook. White's really going to have a difficult time to deal with that. Instead, you could see knight here to f3. This is even worse for white because after the pawn takes, forcing this knight to move. Next move from black is to bring his knight here to d4. Now attacking this square here on c2 as well. So that's going to be bad as well. White could try to be super aggressive and play pawn here to d4, attacking the center, opening up the door for his bishop to come to g5, attacking the queen. This can be pretty troublesome, but black can continue with the same game plan and being aggressive, play pawn here to d5, trying to break up the center of the board. After bishop to g5, attacking the queen here on d8, queen here to d6 is completely safe. It's also defending the square here on g6, allows this queen to come outside the pawn chain and start to attack if he wants to. And there's just not a lot of great squares that white can really find here. He could, if he takes with his pawn here, he may not know how to take in this particular case, so there's, there's so many variations. After the pawn takes, knight takes on d4. Black has a huge advantage right here. This knight's really tough to deal with. If instead we see pawn take here on e5, uh, then we can have the queen come here to b4, attacking this pawn here on b2 and check. This is very bad for white as well. Or we could even see just the pawn take here on f5, and then the knight takes here on d4, still attacking this as well. So, so many different ways for white to just fall into traps because he just doesn't know how to attack. Now, from an actual game, which was pretty interesting, is after the knight came here to c3, white tried to play a little bit more passive. He played pawn here to, to d3, and then we have pawn here to d5, trying to break up the center. Then the queen came back here to e3, trying to get his queen back involved into the game. Back on h6, it's just not doing a whole heck of a lot of anything. Now the knight came here to d4, again attacking the square here on c2. White did somewhat lose a move because he played queen here to e3. Now all of a sudden he has to move it to defend the square here on c2. So he brought his queen back here to d2. And then pawn takes, pawn takes. This opens up this file right here. So black decides to go ahead and swing his rook over here to d7. Recognizing that it, once this knight moves, he'll have a discovered attack on this queen. So if he were to play knight here to f3, check and allowing him to attack this queen right here. The queen's going to move out of the way. Queen to c3, trying to control the center of the board, but still get out of the way. But then black was able to find bishop here to b4, pinning down the queen. The queen is forced to do something. He decides to take. And then knight taking here on c2, forking this queen. White was forced to resign. All that to say, your opponent and I might not play exactly like that, but the point of the Calibri's counter gamut is to put your opponent in a ton of really, really difficult positions, and there's so many different ways that he can fall into a trap or fall behind or even lose the game very quickly. I really, really like all the attacking lines that Black has in this opening. Now, we spent a lot of time so far looking at what happens if the bishop takes the knight here on g8. There's a very real possibility your opponent may not do that. What One thing he may do is decide to go ahead and take this pawn here on f5. That's going to be fine. Black's going to continue with knight here to f6. Very similar to kind of if you play the king's gambit for white, kind of on the reverse side right here. Later, black will look to push forward with his pawn. 
control the center of the board and open up the board for his light square bishop to retake this pawn here on f5. Now as far as what white could do, one of the moves would be knight to f3. Then we could see pushing forward with pawn here to d5, attacking this bishop. If, in case, our opponent plays bishop here to b5, threatening, ca checking our, our king right here on e8, pawn to c6, the bishop comes back here to a4. Very important to note, if you see this in this particular case, you've already stretched forward, you, you're a little thin on the king side as far as defense, do not play pawn here to b5. I think this is a critical mistake. After bishop here to b3, white can just really let black overextend himself. These pawns right here are going to be very difficult for black to really control all of them. Uh, there's so much air right now to go ahead and get underneath here and attack this king. I really just don't like this setup for black. Instead, once this bishop come back here, that's going to be fine. Black can push forward with pawn here to e4. He really has this long, very structured pawn structure. It's all pointing at the king side, so more than likely the attack's going to be going at the king side of white. But this is a much better setup for black. Now if the queen were to come to e2 so that this pawn couldn't be captured, or this knight couldn't be captured by the pawn, then bishop takes here on f5, recapturing. Now both sides are equal in material, but all of a sudden black is completely dominating the center of the board. This is definitely going to be a much better setup for black. If instead the queen, now the knight comes here to e5, trying to be a little bit more aggressive than bringing his queen out right away, then bishop here to d6, attacking this knight. The knight could try to get somewhat creative playing knight here to g4 knowing that his queen's protecting it but after knight takes and the queen captures black and castle on the king side all of a sudden he has his bishop and his rook attacking this square right here this rook is controlling the semi-open file black has a huge advantage he's completely dominating the center of the board his bishop pair are completely dominating white really doesn't have any of his pieces developed besides his bishop over here on a4 but even if his bishop comes to b3 he's not going to have any sort of attack so this is definitely going to be very very good for black another thing that you could see instead of the knight coming here to g4 is pawn to d4 trying to solidify this black has a few options my recommendation is not to take with en passant right here I just don't think it's very good and I can come back here. This kind of opens up this file right here for white to attack and it kind of messed up some of the center control that black had with his central square pawn of e4. Instead, black can continue controlling the center with his pawns and play knight here to d7. This is going to be completely fine. Now sort of forcing the hand of white to do something on the board. This is going to be good for black as well. If we back up a few moves after knight to f6 instead of playing this knight here to f3, another move that we could see is pawn here to d4, striking the center of the board. We're just going to go ahead and take that material. That's going to be completely okay with us. Now, if our, if our opponent takes with queen to uh, d4, we're now going to just push forward with pawn here to d5, forcing this bishop to move. That's going to be fine. We can now get our dark square bishop involved into the game. Castle on the king side. We're now opening up the door with the discovered attack with our bishop here on f5. So a lot of different options uh, for black in this particular case. Now if the queen doesn't take, because he doesn't have to, he could play queen here to e2, forcing our move. This is going to be good for us because we're trying to develop our bishop to castle on the king side, so this is going to be fine. Knight here to f3. We could first push forward with pawn here to d5, threatening for this bishop to move first, and then castle on the king side. That's going to be fine for black as well. Now if we come back to the beginning of the Italian attack and then we play this pawn here to f5, you could see an aggressive queen here to h5 from white. Now usually you don't want to bring your queen involved into the action unless you have a real strong reason to. It's just going to be very, very easy for black to stop this pawn here to g6 thwarts it right away. The queen can't take it in materials, kind of forced to go back, really doesn't want to play queen here to e2 or d1. I mean, I guess he could, but it it's just not... It's kind of a wasted move. He could try queen here to f3 to try to be somewhat aggressive, control the center of the board. But this just kind of blocks off some of his development. Knight to f3 can no longer come into the game. This is just not, not as good as it could potentially be. Knight to f6, continuing the same development for black as he wants to. 
Knight here to c3 because his knight can't come into the action. Knight here to c th c6, also threatening this knight here to d4 next. So a lot of different ways for black to attack this. I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried too much if the queen ever came down here to h5 because he just doesn't have a strong attack. The next option that you may see is pawn here to d4, striking the center of the board, putting us to the test. It's very important to understand how you should capture. In this particular case, you need to capture with your e pawn, just like this. Now, there's a few ways for white to respond now. He could take our f pawn. That's going to be fine. We're going to play knight here to f6, kind of forcing our opponent's hand. Uh, now he has a few options. He could play knight to f3, attacking this. We're going to play pawn here to d5. Really, it doesn't matter what he plays. He could take with his queen. We're playing this pawn here to d5, getting ready to get our bishop involved into the game. Castle on the king side. Same game plan that, that we've seen before. If instead of taking, he could play knight to f3 right away, attacking this. But this is going to be a lot worse just because the pawn can take forcing the knight to move. If he does take now, that's not going to be the worst thing. Knight takes here on d4. Knight to f6, defending the square right here. Now if we see knight to c3, very interesting move to attack the square. Now black really needs to play pawn here to c6, getting ready to set up with pawn here to d5. He wants to play pawn here to d5 right away, but he just doesn't have the material to kind of hold down the fort. So first pawn here to c6, and then push forward with pawn here to d5 is definitely going to be a way for black to continue. Now it does have the other option I have seen. After the pawn takes, the bishop can now come to g8. He may not want to do it early on, but may decide to do it now. Black is forced to play this rook takes here. You could now have the queen come into the action trying to control the center of the board. Knight to c6 attacking, forcing this queen to move somewhere. There's no great squares for this queen to go to. Obviously, major mistakes would be queen here to c3 because bishop here to b4, pinning it down. The queen's going to fall. That, we obviously know, is going to be very, very bad. We could see queen here to c4, trying to control the center of the board, still attacking this rook right here on g8. But just pawn to d5 kind of stops it. Yes, our opponent can just play pawn here to d5. But black has a, a nice little subtle move of knight here to b5. This not only opens up the door, uh, but also you know we have this bishop here defending it. And now we have the two attackers that we want on this square right here. White can't try something funny like a knight to c3 because then we can easily just come in and fork this rook over here. So pretty nice move from black if it comes to that. Another move that you may see is pawn here to d3. Pretty, pretty passive way to do it. Sometimes players play pretty passively if they don't know what you're doing. They just don't want to fall in any traps. But black's going to continue with knight to f6, control the center of the board, develop his pieces. Knight here to f3, knight c6, castle. And then bishop here to c5. Uh, this is a pretty natural way. Next could be pawn here to d6 if we want to, opening up the door. We can castle on the queen side. We can castle on the king side. So we still have some options depending on where our opponents go and how we want to control the center of the board. Now if we come back, another move that you may see is knight to c3 attacking. This is probably one of the safer options for white. I really hope my opponent doesn't play this because I want it to get pretty crazy on the board just because I like wild and crazy tactics. So knight to f3 going to be the same. More than likely, if he's playing the safe option of knight to c3, he's probably going to continue with d3. We have knight to c6, knight f3. Some of the similar stuff we saw before. We could take now if we wanted to. After it takes, bishop here to c5. We could even play bishop here to b4, pinning down this knight because we have that option now. So uh, a few different ways to attack this. Another option that you could see, we're not going to go over too much about it just because it is a, a different opening, is knight here to f3. This gets into the Latvia gambit, which is a different opening, one of my favorite openings. But now black's just going to take with his pawn here on e4. If you want to go further down this rabbit trail, uh, it usually starts out instead of the bishop coming here to c4 first, it's instead the knight's coming here to f3 and then pawn here to f5. But it usually 
has bishop here to c4 after that. This is the Latvian gambit, so again, we're not going to do a video on this, but just in case you see this and you want to learn about how that variation works out, you can definitely watch the video that I made on the Latvian gambit. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this rather in-depth video on the Calabrese counter gambit. Uh, I think it's one of the more comprehensive of videos or even study guides out there on the counter game. And I've used it a lot and I really like it. So hopefully you learn something. You can try it out if your opponent ever does play the Italian game. Uh, but thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you on the next video.